This began when I was very young. I can't pinpoint exactly how young, but I'd assume the first encounter, I remember, must be from when I was around six years old. Max eight, because we had just moved into a new location. I used to spend most of my time as a kid in our basement watching films from a VHS player. The TV upstairs was always on, being used, and didn't have any player attached. I'd watch films for hours and hours on end, whatever I found in the cabinet. When it finally became dark outside, which I could see from the very thin windows that were above ground, in our basement, I would always start feeling uneasy, as if something was watching me. I remember getting very paranoid. The stairway didn't have lights. So, of course, it got pitch black. I usually went back upstairs when I got too scared, or when I saw them, the shadow people, staring at me through the TV screen, standing behind me. Of course, no one ever was there. When I turned around, I just saw them when a movie ended or whatever was playing at the time. This happened very often, I guess. One would explain this as some sort of child's imagination, and I wouldn't doubt if it was just my imagination back then. I didn't really think about them for a long time when we moved out of that house. I was around 13 when I had my next encounter. I was home alone, doing whatever on my laptop when I heard a bang from the hallway. I instantly thought that my mom must have come home, or one of my siblings did, so I went to check. Instead of seeing one of my family members, I saw a tall, shadowy figure in the hallway. It only lasted for a second, but it scared me to the point that I barricaded myself in my room until my real family came home. I didn't see them for another three years that I can remember. And we moved again before I went to vocational college in another city. In this new house, a pretty similar event to the last one happened. At this point, I was already in vocational college for safety and security. I just came home from the weekend. Again, my family was elsewhere for the day. Not like it was anything out of the ordinary, I was usually home alone at this point. Knowing that my mom took my siblings to the city when I heard a coin dropping on our kitchen floor, I could only think of one possible scenario, a burglar. Our back door was never locked. And I mean, never. Where was the back door? In our kitchen. With that conclusion knowing the basics of self-defense, I grabbed a pair of scissors in my room and proceeded out of my room to check to see what was going on after listening for a few minutes for footsteps. I first checked the hallway that was further away from the kitchen, seeing those rooms were possible for me to run into if there was someone. I went and finally peeked into the kitchen. No burglar, just them, again. For a second or less, a tall, shadowy figure standing in a reaching position to our cabinet that was open for some reason. It turned its head toward me before disappearing. I stood there in a mild shock for a couple of seconds after the figure was gone. I closed the cabinet and for the time I was alone, I locked the back door anyway. My next and most recent experience I had with them, as from roughly two years ago, I had already graduated. In fact, I already worked as a full-time security guard. I lived at home though, my mom didn't mind it since she wanted to ensure I could afford living alone when I decided to do so. A similar situation to the previous ones, I'm home alone, how surprising. I was playing on my laptop and I had a headset on, but I usually kept one ear free in case I heard something in the house, like my mom calling me or someone knocking on my door. While I was playing, I heard clear speech from our kitchen and living room area. So I paused the game and took off my headphones. I could still hear it, but not what they were saying. I didn't recognize the voices either. Again, my first thought was that someone broke in. I sneaked to my door to listen more carefully. The talking had stopped at this point, and now I heard footsteps, clear ones, coming toward my room from the hallway. I didn't want to stay and find out if there was someone at this point. My only option was to rush to my window, open it fully, and jump out. The drop was only around 1.6 meters. Once I got out, I rushed to the front yard, no cars besides the couple that were broken and always near our garage. I stood outside for a long while looking inside from the windows for any movement around the house. I saw nothing at first. Then, I looked at my sister's window, which was a room right next to mine, and would you guess it? 
I saw two of them staring outside of the window, straight at me, for what felt like forever before they disappeared. I went back in and checked the entire house afterwards, finding nothing else. I turned 20 this year, and I've been a guard for approximately two and a half. I just moved away from home altogether with my old roommate from vocational college. I don't have any other mental illnesses that have been diagnosed besides depression. I'm not really easily frightened or spooked. And I swear, when I walk into the kitchen during the nights to get something to eat or drink, I still feel them watching me. Even when my room and housemate is at home, I know they are following me, and it's only a matter of time before I see them again. I don't fear them, per se. I don't think they want to harm me. I don't think they want to scare me either. I still feel uneasy, and thinking about them makes me uneasy, especially when I have no clue if I'll ever see them again. I think I was 12 the first time this happened, and the other instances that this happened was when I was in the 8th grade, so 13 or 14. So the first time I was in church because they were celebrating Mother's Day, I had on a red dress and black shoes with my hair down. It was a very short experience, but I saw someone walk through the wall in front of me when I was looking at it, but it wasn't just someone, it looked like me. It had the same red dress and the same black shoes, and it looked like I had walked through the wall. This isn't really related, but once everyone went outside to hit the panada, I went back inside to get something to drink, and I heard someone laughing. It sounded more like a cackle. I searched to see if anyone was there, but no one was inside the church, so I immediately ran outside. The second time this happened to me was when I was in the eighth grade, and it wasn't just me who saw these spirits, but my brother and dad also. The difference was these spirits were actually shadow people and not like the first time when I saw the entity in color. Anyway, my dad one day told us that when he was home alone, he saw my brother walk through the second living room door and walk around the living room. Seeing that, my dad immediately thought he was home and thought nothing much of it. An hour or so later, my brother opened the door and walked into the living room. So, what my dad saw wasn't my brother. He also told us that when he was home alone again, he was in the kitchen cooking something. But when you're in the kitchen, you can see the living room and the living room door in my house. Well, anyway, he was cooking and he sees me walk through the main living room door. He said, I just continued walking down the hallway and disappeared into my room on the left of the hall. I was at school at the time, so this couldn't have been me, and he was home alone at the time. I also saw my dad's shadowy figure. It was in the morning, and I was in my room. I think it was around 6 a.m., so I was getting ready for school at the time. I opened my door and poked my head out to see if my dad was awake yet because I didn't want him to yell at me for being late. My room is down a long hallway, and it's the last room on the left. The hallway leads straight to the living room and living room door. When I poked my head out, I saw my dad looking the transparent door as he always does in the morning. I finished getting dressed because I didn't want to get yelled at and started making my way out. I was walking down the hallway, fully expecting my dad to be there, but he wasn't. In fact, as I was walking, I heard my dad snoring in his room. His room is across from mine, so I could clearly hear him snoring. There was no one in the living room, so I just left to go to school. My mom didn't see any of this, and we didn't see a shadow figure that looked like her, either. But she did tell me that something odd happened two minutes after I had left for school that day. My headphones were on her dresser, and they fell down by themselves. She didn't think much of it and tried to attribute it to something else, but then she heard me yell mom repeatedly. Also, I'm not sure if this is related, but my dad died in the same year that we saw all these entities. So could they have been a sign or a bad omen? Are they shadow people or doppelgangers or both? After he died, he started sort of visiting us and haunting us as well. I don't know what these things were, but I think they bring bad things and I hope I don't see them again.
I've seen the shadow people ever since I was little, when I would see them out of the corner of my eye, then I'd go to look and nothing was there. I do usually see them long enough to make out some features though. They're either short or tall or black or gray. I thought it was just a trick of my mind until one night I was staying over at a friend's place. My friend had two cats. I was asleep and all of a sudden I woke up feeling an intense sense of dread. The cat started freaking out and scratching and meowing at the door. I had stayed over at my friend's place before and the cats never did that. Then I saw a shadow person by the door and I tried to convince myself it wasn't there and closed my eyes for a second. When I opened them again, the shadow person was standing at the bottom of the bed. This one was completely black. It had no eyes or facial features. It really just looked like a moving shadow. I closed my eyes again, thinking that I was imagining things, and I opened them again, and this time, the shadow person was right over me. At this point, somehow the cats got through the door, even though I thought I had locked. It and chased the shadow person out the window that was above the headboard of the bed. I say chase because I'm not really sure if they scared it or if it just left. As soon as it left, so did the dread that I was feeling. My friend's cats hated me after that and would always hiss at me when I tried to pet them. Before they loved me, I would have considered it as a sleep paralysis episode, even though I've never had one before except for the cats reacting the way they did. I've never experienced something like that since, but I do see them occasionally. When my family moved to our newly built house, we started hearing noises upstairs, which started out as creaks and small bangs, but turned into footsteps and loud bangs and doors slamming. My mom's side is sensitive to ghosts, and it didn't seem to be that until one day. I saw a man in all black with a hat and trench coat staring at me from around the corner. I thought it was a ghost at first, but I was about eight years old, was already used to seeing these types of things, and had talked about it before with my mom. One day he was standing there, and I asked my mom if she could see him, and she turned and was like, oh, yep, there he is. Hey, Fred to try to make it more lighthearted to my younger sister, who turned around and saw him as well. It became a joke that his name was Fred and we let him be because he never caused any harm or showed any intent. We continue to see him around and hear his noises until we moved about four years later. At the house my family lives in now, I still saw him, but my mom no longer did, and my sister saw him occasionally, but only ever in front of my bedroom door or in my room, if it was open and I wasn't in there. At our new house, his feeling changed to me and it became more and more mean and malevolent to the point where I freaked out at 3 a.m. and used chopstick to put crosses on the entrance to my room. I was 15, don't judge. At that point, he didn't enter my room but stood outside my door or in my closet and I could feel him and his bad energy through it. My sister still reported just seeing him standing there not bothering her. About two years ago is when I read about shadow people, and I think that maybe that's what he is. It's the same figure, never any different kind of person. Two years ago, I moved out with my fiance, who I think the shadow man really doesn't like, and I still see him in the three different places we've lived, and my sister no longer sees him in my parents' house or anywhere else. I don't specifically believe in God, but my fiance does, and we have some crosses which seem to keep the shadow man out of our bedroom, but I can still feel him at the door. Once I leave, I can see him or feel him watching or following me outside. Lately, I've been seeing small shadows when I'm outside and at work, and I'm not sure if that's him trying to trick me into thinking there's an animal and trying to follow it or something, but I just don't know. I don't know if this is even a shadow person or if it's something worse. And for the record, I've never used Ouija boards or anything paranormal that could upset the other side. I have some crystals and I'm looking into some new ones if that helps, but maybe I should sage the house. I've tried ignoring him, asking him what he needs and telling him to leave, but nothing works. I don't know who he is or what he wants.
These are the encounters I've had with these shadow-like entities in the past two years. To start, I've never done any hallucinogenic drugs or anything of the sort. I'm in the military, and it's way too hard to get away with that stuff to begin with, even if I wanted to. From what I can remember, all of this started happening to me when I was stationed at Fort Sill, Oklahoma for my military job training. Late one night, I was sleeping in my bunk when I suddenly woke up to what looked like a black figure walking into my room. Wiping the sleep out of my eyes, I sat up thinking that it was one of the guys on fire guard that night, taking head count for the sergeant on CQ. Fire guard is just one of the guys that watches over the barracks during the night to make sure no funny business happens. Just as soon as I sat up to greet the guy walking in, it dissipated into nothingness. Really confused, I looked at the top bunk and saw that my bunkmate was up from his phone screen, lighting up the ceiling. I spoke up and said, Hey, Long, did you see someone walk into our room just now? He paused and looked down from the top of his bunk at me and said, Nah, man. Fire guard came in like an hour ago. You were knocked out for the night. This time I simply brushed it off and thought it was just a strange encounter and nothing else. Fast forward to January 2nd, 18, I started college at the University of North Dakota, UND. This is when the encounters got really bad, to the point where I was too afraid to go to sleep. Some nights, I lived in a really old dorm building called Squires Hall, way back in the day by myself. The encounters I had didn't all have these shadow people in them, but I'll share what I remember. One night, I went to bed and woke up to a tall, shadowy person standing in front of the door of my room with crimson eyes that seemed to stare right through me. I sat up in bed and freaked out. Side note, I don't consider myself a very religious person at all, more like agnostic to clear everything up so you could imagine my fear seeing these things. After what felt like an eternity having a staring contest with this entity, I shouted, what do you want with me? It took one big step towards me, shook its head, and in a feminine voice it said, Help. With that, it vanished into the darkness in my room. Another time, that really stands out, was when it was the end of spring semester, the last week of school. I had most of my room and clothes packed up, and I was ready to move out after my finals were done, and I had a couple of cans of Coke in the back of my mini fridge by the door in my room. One night, during that week, I went to bed and woke up to a loud bang. I sat up in my bed and looked towards where the noise came from, my room, towards the door. There, standing in front of my door, was a black figure. It took one step toward me, next to the fridge, and pointed down at it, and then disappeared. I turned on the lamp on my bed and walked over to my fridge, opened it and looked in. There in the back of the fridge, a can of Coke had exploded an example of the non-shadow people things I see. While I was und, I had a long-distance girlfriend. Over a year, we started dating in high school, and when I enlisted in the military, she started school at the College of St. Scholastica, a private college in Duluth, Minnesota. So at the time that the story begins, we've been dating for over a year, and everything was great, although she did have a grandfather at the time who was very sick. One night, I woke up, and at the foot of my bed, I saw three figures. On the right, there stood my girlfriend, from the past, a little girl with a silly bob haircut and a pink dress from a photo that I once saw of her. In the middle was my girlfriend from the present, long blonde hair leggings and a sweatshirt. Then on the left was my girlfriend from the future. She wore a long black dress as dark as the night with long black hair, where her face should have been was just a black, messy blur unlike the other figures beside her. Brushing off the incident, I didn't think anything of it, and I didn't tell her what I saw that night. Two days later, I got a phone call from her crying. She told me that the grandfather that had been so close to, to her, had passed, away, and that she wanted to take a break from our relationship to try to figure everything out. After the call ended, I thought back to what I saw that night and analyzed with that third figure might have been trying to tell me. The black dress might have symbolized death, like the clothes you would wear to a funeral. In the blurry bat black face meaning she would break our relationship up when she heard about her grandfather's death. 
Somehow, I had a clairvoyant vision of the near future. Other times I hear people in my room while I'm trying to fall asleep, either people trying to speak to me or talking to someone else in the room. Most of the time, I'll hear people whisper my name in my ear when I'm laying in bed trying to fall asleep. That summer, I went to see a psychiatrist just to make sure that I wasn't going crazy. From the sessions I had and the stories I told him, I wasn't schizophrenic. But I was diagnosed with a kind of sleeping disorder. It's called hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations. The hypnagogic is falling asleep and the hypnopompic is waking up. Basically, as I'm falling asleep or coming out of sleep, certain parts of my brain either go to sleep or come out of a sleeping state slower and faster than other parts, making me have these visual and an auditory hallucinations. Hearing all of this, I still have my doubts. I don't doubt his credibility or anything like that, but I think that there's more to this than just I'm hallucinating. I used to see shadow people when I was younger. My father lives right next to a graveyard and there's a street from it down towards the house. When I was like five to six years old, I used to sit on my couch and look out towards the graveyard. I would often see dark figures floating down the street quickly towards our house. Most dark figures would wear a cloak as they floated. I would see them float towards our house at least twice a week. I don't really remember if I told my parents about the dark figures or not. Sometimes I would get scared if I quickly looked out and saw them coming, but sometimes they would just fade and start floating down. Later on, my mother moved into an apartment when I was maybe six or seven years old. We had a long hallway leading from the entrance door down to my room. In the hallway, there were doors to other rooms, such as the kitchen, her room, the living room, and the bathroom. After a few years of living in that apartment, I started to see shadow creatures at the corner of my eye. I could see the whole hallway if I just looked a little bit to my side. First, they would appear near the entrance door. But soon, with time, they would move closer and closer to my room until eventually they would stand by the door and peek into my room as I was sitting in there. We have now moved into a newer apartment and now I'm almost an adult. I've stopped seeing the shadow figures around my dad's house, and I no longer see shadow people in my apartment ever since we moved out. But sometimes, as I am in my new room playing video games, I can see in the corner of my eye a cat-looking dark creature walked past me. I used to have a cat when I was five, but it's long dead. It disappears as soon as I turn my head to look at it. I see it about twice a month. This is my experience with shadow creatures. I just wish I knew what they were. I moved to Fairhaven, Michigan when I was about four. I remember explicitly walking into the big blue house on the corner of a street called Sunnyside with my father. It seemed huge compared to the cramped apartment we had moved away from. This tiny town was located right off Anchor Bay, which is a part of the St. Lawrence Seaway. This means that the land and these quaint homes were built on were very old, with more history than my four-year-old mind could comprehend. Not long after we moved in, after my sister and I were tucked in for the night, we began to hear disembodied whistling. It wasn't scary, eerie whistling, but rather jovial, upbeat whistling. At first, we thought it was a neighbor, our parents, somebody else, but after a while, we realized that it wasn't. I can vividly recall playing in my room with my sister one morning and watching plainly as one of our toy planes rolled on the carpet across the floor. I can also recall my mother as I ran to tell her, telling me to quit making up stories, but my sister had seen it too. After that, though, we kept our experiences to ourselves. That's why I've never mentioned the shadow people. My mother always used to shut my door after she put us to bed. That's why, when I woke up in the dead of night to see it ajar, I was confused. I sat up, squinting in the darkness to see why my door had been left open, and that was when I saw it. A shadow, rather. Two shadows, distinctly defined, moving towards me. They had no face, no eyes, 
only the outline of two dark people things moving, almost as if they were in slow motion or underwater. I hid under the covers until morning. What's weird is, I can remember being on the school bus and casually talking about the shadow people to a fellow classmate. They never really gave me any guff or reacted weirdly. Does that mean that they saw them too? First of all, I'll give you a little backstory into my life. Growing up, my grandmother and I would mess around with the paranormal, doing EVPs and such. When I was 13, though, we stopped. My grandma recently started doing it again, and in return, strange things have been happening to me. I work in a nursing home, I've been there for almost a year, and I've never really experienced anything particularly paranormal. I work nights, so there's the occasional creak, but nothing crazy. That was until one evening. I was emptying a catch bag and the resident's roommate, who was in the hospital at the time. Her glass trinket started to make the sound of clanking. I turn around to see the glass trinket fly across the room at me. I calmly walk out, recollect myself, and then go back into the room and pick the object up and put it back where it belongs. Weeks go by and nothing else happens. Until one night around one o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting at the nurse's station and I hear what sounds like running down the hallway. I jump up and get out of my chair to look down the hall, but nothing. I brush it off as my head playing tricks on me and thought I was suffering from some mild paranoia that night. Well, half an hour goes by. I've calmed down quite a bit when the attic starts to creak and it sounds like human footsteps are coming from above me. I run down to the other unit to ask if any of the maintenance men have come in or in the attic. They laugh at me and say, no, why? And I say, I think someone's up there. The Unit nurse tells me that stuff fell out of one of the attic doors as we have multiple and one of the items was a mask that you get when you're sick. I then went and looked at every attic door and they were all closed. There's no ladders leading up to them. I again tried to tell myself that it was all in my head, but to this day I believe someone alive or dead was up there. Then one night I was off at home, sleeping. When I recall seeing shadow people walking fast around my room, I don't know if I was awake or asleep, but I felt very much like I was awake and that this was real. They were looking for something. I couldn't move, but I was watching them and thinking, what in the world is going on? Then I was all of a sudden in my grandma's old house and these shadows shadow people were ripping up the stairs looking for seeds. Then I was in an apartment complex stairwell and this boy told me to give him my hand and so I did. He cut into the top section of my finger, and inside me were three little white seeds. So he took them. At this point I woke up, and my finger hurt. I then went back to sleep and saw the shadow people again. One of them, this time, touched my back, and I woke up again into my back being cold. And to my surprise, my shirt was raised up in the back, and my skin was exposed. I don't know if what we did when I was younger, would make them automatically connect to me, 